Hello everyone and welcome to another Friday new product post. We've got some interesting products for you this week, so let's go ahead and see what we've got for this week. So here we've got a couple of new products that are revisions of older products. These two are the revisions for the Beefcake Relay kit and the Beefcake Relay PCB. Um, the PCB is the same in the two, but we sell it in the kit and also as the bare PCB. As you can see, it's gone through a relatively radical design, and we have fixed some of the issues with it, but not all of them. It's still a really good kit, but if you do look at the product description, there's still a couple little caveats about it. Um, we have actually further isolated the t four mounting holes on the front and the back, so there really should be no issue with um, a screw touching on any of those active traces. However, best case scenario, you should still use nylon connector hardware, plastic connecting hardware. Um, this can support our really large 15 amp relay fits right in there like that. And so if you're looking to control relatively large loads, the Beefcake Relay Kit is probably what you should be looking at. Um, it comes with the relay, some of these connectors, the PCB, which I already talked about, and then a couple of components. It uses um, just a simple transistor to control the relay, so you don't need that much input current going into it to actually trigger the relay. And when you build it up, it looks something a little bit like this. So with any basic microcontroller, you can just send it a um, signal to click on the relay, and you can control about 15 amps worth. Now, these connectors really can't handle that much current, so you might want to go directly into these two holes here, and you're probably not going to get the full 15 amps out of it because of the size of these traces, but you should be able to draw quite a bit of current out of it. So check out this. We're going to have um, possibly another revision coming out soon. If you still do need the full 15 amps and need something you know even beefier than this, um, we will have that. Most people are probably only going to use this for like you know five to 10 amps, which this should be perfectly fine. So this is a revision, and we're going to have probably a final one coming out. So check this out in the meantime, and um, yeah, start switching some high current loads. Here we have a new color sensor breakout. This actually uses the HDJD S822 color sense module right there. And what this module does and what this breakout does is it allows you to look at a color, determine the color, and read it into your project. So that's the simplification. Um, it outputs the RGB values as an analog, I think it's an 8-bit value, so you can individually read in R, G, and B as a um, 0 to 255-digit value into your microcontroller, and you can say this is this color. So, you know, if we put this up against blue, it would return probably a relatively high value for blue, and then, you know, low values for the others. So, there's a lot of different uses for this. Um, you could probably use this for... Eh, maybe a more advanced line follower robot that maybe you had like a track of rainbows and each robot could have their own color in the rainbow and follow that. Or um, I'm into photography, so I was actually thinking about using this maybe for monitor calibration. Um, you could maybe read the color on your screen and then compare it with the color on, you know, a printer that you output. And, you know, you could use it against that to calibrate your printer with your monitor. So there's a lot of different uses for this, but Essentially, the very simple use is reading a color and reading an RGB value analog output. So it's a pretty interesting little board and really easy to use. So two weeks ago, we talked about the Mr. Roboto kit. That was a little robot kit that had one of these little LCDs on it. And a lot of people asked if we would sell this LCD separately. And of course, we're going to sell it separately. So here it is. This is a you know, relatively miniature little LCD. It's a character LCD, and it's um, eight characters by two lines, so you can fit you know, 16 digits total on it. So it's not very big. You can't fit a lot on it, but the size is nice, and it's a really simple display to use. This has the same driver IC that our 16 by two character LCDs have, so you can use the example right in the Arduino library, hook it up, has pretty much the same pin configuration, and you can start writing stuff to it really simply. You do need, I think, about 11 digital pins, so it uses a lot of digital pins, but we do have the serial backpack that you could put on this. Um, because the pins are arranged like this, the serial backpack won't line up, but you could just do jumper wires or something like that to the pins and get the serial backpack that we have to work with this. Um, so if you're looking for a relatively small and easy-to-use LCD, check this guy out. 
And we've got another breakout this week. This is the breakout board for the N35P112. Uh, the easy point module, as we're calling it, is a I squared C joystick. Um, basically what it is, you've got this little nub here, and you can move it around. It moves kind of like on a flat plane. It doesn't move like a joystick like that. It moves, you know, sliding kind of like that. And it even has a click. And essentially what's happening in here is it's actually a Hall effect sensor with a magnet moving around. So there's no real mechanical moving parts. So you have a lot better reliability with a piece like this. And since it's I squared C, it allows you a little bit more opportunity to hook up to different microcontrollers than maybe like serial, or if you don't have any analog pins available, you can use this over I squared C instead. So um, pretty cool little breakout, as you can see. It's um, you know relatively small. You can fit into a lot of different things. And, you know, these joystick inputs with the selection are really good because um, you can map this to a lot of different things and use it for a lot of different input options. So check this one out. So there you have it, the conclusion to another Friday New Product Post. As always, we have more stuff on the website, so go ahead and check that out and check out all the products that we had for this week. And we'll see you again next week with even more new products.